Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am Sriya and I teach biology for fun. So our topic of discussion for today is mechanism of urine formation. In the previous video, I discussed the structure of a nephron and today I'll be discussing how urine is concentrated throughout the nephron. So before we discuss about urine formation, let's talk about urea. So you, as you know that humans are mammals and mammals excrete nitrogenous waste in the form of urea. So where and when is this nitrogen or ammonia converted into urea? So this process takes place in the liver and this process is also known as ornithin cycle or Krebs Henselage cycle named after the people who discovered it. Okay, so you just have to know few basic things on this cycle. This isn't from NCRT. This is for your neat portions and all you have to know is there is expenditure of 3 ATP in this cycle plus there is requirement of two ammonia molecules and um, there is also a requirement of one carbon dioxide molecule to convert ammonia into urea to produce one molecule of urea. That's all you have to know about this cycle and where we get that ammonia from is from different amino acids. So now urea has been formed in the liver. It's taken via the renal artery into the kidney and in the kidney it breaks down into several capillaries goes through the renal pelvis into the nephrons via the afferent arteriole now this afferent arteriole has urea mixed with blood hum pura to excrete nahi kar sakte so what happens is the urea and other waste products are separated from the blood and this occurs this whole process is known as urine formation it has three main processes involved in it First one is glomerular filtration, second one is selective reabsorption and the third one is secretion. Glomerular filtration takes place in the malpigian corpuscel part of the nephron and selective reabsorption and secretion take place in the loop of Henle and PCT and DCT. So we learn all of this in detail. So let's come to the first process that is glomerular filtration. Okay, so the blood has entered the glomerulus. Ab glomerulus mein kya hota hai? The entire blood is separated according to its size, you can say. So, let's take, there are three membranes present. To ye tumhara ho gaya Bauman's capsule. Oh my god, this is so bad. I can't even. Anyways, I'll try drawing it again. Okay. Yeah. This is Bowman's capsule and let's take some other color for glomerulus. So suppose this is the glomerulus. Okay. So blood is here in the glomerulus. Blood say urea and other materials separate out. Now blood say what are all the things that separate out. So plasma minus proteins. So what happens is blood may say plasma is completely separated out without proteins and without WBCs and RBCs. So basically jo bhi aata hai Bowman's capsule mein, it's all just urea, glucose, amino acids, other ways such as creatine, water, electrolytes and all those smaller things which can pass through these layers. Now let's talk about the layers. The first layer is the endothelium of glomerular capillaries so you know capillaries are one cell thick okay so that endothelium is the first layer that blood has to cross the second layer is a basement membrane so there is a basement membrane which is present between the blood vessels and the Bowman's capsule so that is the second layer and the third layer that the blood or urea has to pass through is the epithelium of Bowman's capsule Bowman's capsule is made up of thin, simple squamous epithelium. So these three layers are crossed by the blood and it's completely filtered out. So guess how much blood is 
pumped per minute by the heart or what is the cardiac output so the cardiac output of the heart is 5000 ml per minute now of one fifth of this blood that is about 1100 to 1200 ml that is one fifth of it is taken towards the kidney and it's filtered by the kidney so when this is filtered out the amount of blood that comes out per minute or the amount of plasma or the filtrate you can call it glomerular filtrate that comes out per minute is 125 ml per minute now 125 ml per minute is also known as gfr okay or glomerular filtration rate so, if you take this estimate, kolo, this will almost make 180 liter per day. Now, this much urine we obviously don't secrete out. So, you can say that almost 99% of glomerular filtrate is taken back by the blood. Okay, so that's how urine is formed, and at the end of the day, we almost secrete about 1.5 liters of urine every day pretty normal okay so we're done with that now let's discuss one more thing that is known as renal plasma flow okay so you know that uh, this much amount of blood is taken towards the kidney now in this much amount of blood you have 670 ml of plasma okay and this is known as renal plasma flow. Now there is one more value you need to know. Now this value is known as FF or filtration fraction. Filtration fraction is nothing but GFR divided by renal plasma flow. Okay. And this value almost comes up to 0.17 because gfr is you know 125 renal plasma flow is 670 so that gives you 0 0.17 as filtration fraction now what were the next two processes we learned that was selective reabsorption and secretion now what do these mean i told you that almost 99 percent of entire urine is taken back into the blood so that only 0.8% almost goes into uh, goes excreted out of the body. So this process happens by reabsorption and secretion. Reabsorption is reabsorbing of different uh, materials in the glomerular filtrate by the entire nephron or the tubular part of the nephron and secretion is the secretion of certain electrolytes into the urine or the final product of urine just so that the osmolarity of the kidney is maintained it's very very important to maintain the concentration gradient of the kidney and this is achieved by proper reabsorption and proper secretion in and out of the nephron so let's begin with the exact mechanism of formation of urine let's start with reabsorption okay now the filtrate is formed all right and this filtrate is now in the Bowman's capsule. It travels to the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay. Proximal convoluted tubule is very important because it ensures that essential nutrients. So you know that blood needs many essential nutrients such as glucose, amino acids. Jo it comes into the glomerular filtration. Yeah, into the glomerular filtrate. Now this has to be taken back by the blood. But you already know that the concentration of these substances are more in the blood. So what happens is these are taken by active transport into the blood. Active transport is transportation of substances with the help of special proteins from a lower concentration to a higher concentration with the expenditure of energy. So ATP is required for this process. Also, 70 to 80 percent of electrolytes just let me mention 70 to 80 percent of all electrolytes or the ions are reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule over in this part okay and then let's come to loop of henley loop of henley is where major part of your entire reabsorption will take place 
the descending loop of Henle is impermeable to electrolytes. Matlab, usse sirf water bahar ja sakta hai, electrolytes bahar nahi ja sakte. Okay? So what happens is, water keeps going out of this loop of Henle. So when water goes out, obviously its concentration increases, it becomes less dilute, right? So as we go down loop of Henle, the concentration of the filtrate increases, okay? It is only permeable to water. You should always remember descending loop of Henle is permeable to H2O. Now the ascending loop is completely opposite. Ascending loop of Henle is impermeable to water and permeable to electrolytes. So, Jobi water bahar gaya hai, it is out now. So, this uh, ascending loop of Henle is impermeable to water. So, all the electrolytes come out of it. There are a few electrolytes which come out of it like sodium etc. So, loop of Henle is where major part of filtration takes place because water bahar jata hai. Okay. So, water is the main constituent of blood as you already know. So, major part of it goes out reducing the volume. To a large extent. So now loop of Henle bhi ho gaya. Now let's come to distal convoluted tubule. Okay, distal convoluted tubule say mostly sodium ions are reabsorbed into the blood. Okay, sodium ions and a bit of water is reabsorbed into the blood. Distal convoluted tubule say it goes to collecting duct and collecting duct say major thing that is reabsorbed is water. So collecting duct may it completely gets concentrated. So urine becomes almost four times concentrated than it actually was. Okay. So this is just the reabsorption part. There is also the secretion part. Now certain ions such as H plus, NH3 and K plus that is potassium, hydrogen and ammonia are selectively secreted into the urine. So this is done so that the osmolarity or the ionic balance of the entire kidney and the medullary pyramids interstitium is maintained. So PCT may there are uh, there's reabsorption of hydrogen ions, ammonia and potassium ions. Similarly, there is a uh, reabsorption in the DCT2 of potassium and hydrogen ions and DCT also uh, selectively reabsorbs bicarbonate ions it's as it's given here and it selectively secretes the potassium and hydrogen ions now collecting duct collecting duct what it does is it secretes a bit of urea back to the medullary interstitium that is interstitium matlab the area in between the cells in between the nephrons so this urea is secreted back by the collecting duct into the interstitium so that it maintains the osmolarity again. So this entire counter current process, this one I'll be covering in the next video, but you get the concept of it. You just have to learn what are the ions that are being selectively reabsorbed, selectively secreted, and finally, how concentrated the urine becomes after passing through these stages. So this was the mechanism of formation of urine. All right, so that was the video guys. And so sorry because this is the first time I'm using this uh, Khan Academy type cast software okay and um, I clearly don't know how to draw so I need to practice a bit with this anyways I assure you it's gonna be get better with classes I just hope I get used to this thing anyways uh, thank you so much for watching if you want any other topic to be covered please let me know in the comment section or text me on Instagram so yeah thank you for watching please like share and subscribe